Hello and welcome back to Lumen Weekly. We're a bit late. Uh, I was meant to record this yesterday on Sunday, but I'm doing it on Monday now. Uh, I, there was just so much to do with the whole tournament thing happening. We only finished a bit later, so I'm sure you all understand. I think you saw my nearest busy going crazy here. So, uh, you all watched my vlog. I hope you all watched my vlog anyway, and you could have seen me. I, I did mention that I might be a bit late with it, but this past week I asked you to talk about YouTubers, YouTube, YouTubers, your favorites, and ask me questions about any of these that you have. Well, then I've got a long list here, okay, a really long list. Um, all of you gave me your like top fives basically, and uh, it's pretty interesting. There are a lot of doubles here, so I'm going to go pretty quickly through the lists, and I'll just sort of what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about them as I get to them. So if I mention, say for instance here I see Ray William Johnson or Yogg's cars, then I'll talk about them as I get to them the first time, but then the second time I'm just going to mention them because there's no need to talk about them twice. Okay, so, and then I'll get to the questions. So first going to just go through your sort of replies and then to your questions. I think you know how it works already. So firstly, Cyberwolf X, um, his number one is Yogg's cost and I got to say first, I gotta say Yogg's cast is amazing. Firstly, when I started watching them, I did, <laughs> for some reason I was just irritated by them. I don't know. I When I watched them for the first time, um, it was around the time when they were doing a lot more WoW content. Cataclysm was just sort of uh, coming out, the beta was still active, they were busy with the Cataclysm beta, um, and they were just pl pure annoying. I don't know why, but I just didn't like it. Uh, but then I subscribed to them anyway, <laughs> that's just how I am, I don't know why, but I subscribed to them anyway, and like over time they sort of grew on me, but then the stuff they started putting out just got a bit more diverse and a lot more interesting to me. They started putting out a lot more gaming content, like general gaming, not just WoW stuff. Um, they started their Minecraft stuff, which I actually find pretty interesting. I don't even play Minecraft, but I think it's quite nice. Um, like, they've got enough personality to make something like that work. I don't think anyone can just go and play Minecraft. I think it's boring someone just runs around the world and does random stuff. Um, sure, that's where you can start. You can start your Minecraft adventure doing the basic, basic stuff. But I feel that you need a bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, character to actually make Minecraft work. But anyway, and they definitely have that. Um, I feel that, uh, like, the two of them together, they make a good team, obviously. And the subscribers that they have show it. I remember about a couple of months ago, there were about 100,000 subscribers behind someone like Total Biscuit. And now they are so far ahead that it's not even funny anymore. They've got 570,000 subscribers or something ridiculous like that. Um, and they're just probably one of the biggest gaming related YouTube channels on YouTube now. Uh, but yeah, they're amazing. I enjoy all their stuff. Um, even their second channel where they do the stupid trailers, that's actually really funny. But yes, they, they're really good. And then number two on Cyberwolf's list is Ray William Johnson. Everyone knows Ray William Johnson. Uh, he's now th officially the most subscribed person on YouTube. He does his weekly equals three or something show where he just reviews viral trailers. Um, he's good. He's like really good. I'm going to talk more about Ray William Johnson later because someone had a question about that. Um, but he's entertaining, the videos that he releases, always entertaining, he's your favorite Martian channel, his songs and stuff, some of them aren't that great, but most of them are really good, um, and he puts a lot of effort into his work, he's actually a really uh, solid subscribe, uh, person to subscribe to, definitely worth checking out, but as I said, I'm going to talk about him more later, so I'm not going to go into in detail. And then number three on on uh, Cyberwolf's list here is Tales of Lumen, oh, I don't need to explain who that is. Although I can tell you I don't really like that guy very much, he's dodgy, okay. So, I told you guys not to list me, but you did it anyway, so that's like, very nice of you, but unnecessary. Then Husky Starcraft, um, you know, I'm sort of split about Husky. I like Husky right now. When he first started off, uh, he was annoying as well. He has, he still has, that's the one thing I don't really like about him, he has this pretty shrieky voice. Um, to me also, it, it gets a little bit much sometimes. I can't listen to him for long periods of time. Even just listening to his intro makes me want to close the video. Okay, I can't, I don't know. But he, he's over time, he's sort of matured a little bit and his videos have become a lot better to me. Um, his knowledge of, of, like general knowledge in StarCraft has definitely increased. At first he didn't know a single thing about the game, but now he's actually pretty knowledgeable. Um, and that just comes with the amount of games that he's actually shoutcasted. I, think he sort of just appeals to the masses. That's what it comes down to. He's not, nowhere near as 
as entertaining as day nine to me to watch but he has his moments and I, I do think that he's it, it's good because he sort of links um, it's difficult to explain but he sort of, yeah, he sort of put StarCraft out to the mainstream because people that don't know much about StarCraft can probably watch him and enjoy it. I don't know very much about StarCraft, my like strategical knowledge is, is also not that great, it's okay, um, but I like to learn more when I watch, so Day9 or any of the casters that actually know a little bit more. I recently watched Idra commentate, and commentate with DJ Wheat and that was absolutely amazing, that was just he actually he knows so much about the game and he actually talks pretty well so yeah, anyway Husky Starcraft's not bad at all um, he's like I said it's another one of those that sort of over time got better and I sort of yeah he, he definitely earned my subscription quite a while ago and then Total Halibut or Total Biscuit is number f five on um, Cyberwolf's list Total Biscuit uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit later about Total Biscuit another question about him someone else probably the same person <laughs> we'll get to it um, he also sort of at the start, I didn't enjoy too much his his WoW content. He put out a lot of WoW. That's sort of his claim to fame. He started on Cataclysm and he started with relatively few subs and he sort of exploded when Cataclysm hit. He's got a very good talking voice. Uh, I don't know. I don't always like his his uh, his <laughs> enthusiasm. It's always sometimes a bit sometimes it's a bit much. Okay, um, but. He is good. He's really good. He he's got. He, I think he did a lot of radio talking and stuff like that. He he can talk really really well. That's like that's the number one thing about Total Biscuit. Um, but he puts out nowadays with those with those WTF videos. There there's a lot of good stuff on his channel. I mean, it's nice to be able to watch a video and see what a game is before you buy it. And I think that's. I mean, I think he realized that as well. Um, it's it's good. it's nice to have that. So that's probably one of my favorite parts of his of his channel at the moment. I don't personally really enjoy like his mailbox thing. I mean, sure, it's nice hearing other people's questions. It's sort of like what I'm doing here, but he sits on one topic for very long. Um, but that's the kind of thing I suppose it's nice. He can he actually has some interaction with his subscribers. I personally don't watch it that much, but I like the fact that he's actually putting a bit of effort in to do something like that where a lot of other people aren't. Um, other than that, he's yeah, he's all around pretty good. I think he's going to do a lot of good stuff in the future as well. Um, uh, like I said, I'm going to talk about, him, talk about him a little bit later again as well, so we'll wait there. Um, then, that was it for, for Cyborg, but that's like, those those five, or those four, that one's not me included, but those four came up quite a lot, so the rest is going to go a lot faster now. Uh, then, Spider Present. That's a very interesting nickname, by the way. Who would want a Spider Present? Am I reading that right? Spider pre I'm reading it right. I'm bad at reading, but I read that right. Spider present. That's probably one of the worst presents I'd ever want. Like, no. Anyway, good good nickname. His quick his uh, mention here is um, his favorite so far this year has been Yogg's Cast. He came across a YouTuber called Pedwin Games. Mainly posts Terraria videos. I've listened to his stuff before. He's a British or English or something like that. He's from the UK somewhere. Um, guy and he does a lot of custom maps for Terraria. So you guys can check that out if you want. Uh, also, I, fi I found it yeah interesting. It's nice if someone can focus f uh, uh, as much as that guy does on one thing. And then here's a long reply from Bob T Goldfish. <laughs> it's not Goldfish. Bob T Godfish. I'm sorry, Bob. Um, your nickname is very interesting too. You know that. Um, just because I keep saying it wrong, I don't know why. Goldfish comes natural. Anyway, um, so. Let's see. I know what you say not to mention you, but given I'm not a huge YouTuber, I'm mainly here for StarCraft 2, but you are seriously the latest thing that's, how do you say, as you say, grabbed my attention. Okay, so he, he wrote this a lot better than I'm actually reading it because I'm really bad at the reading. Um, anyway, he says, I have a sincere and strong connection to the Luminians, and I think that really speaks. And I think it's nice when people can actually interact with their subscribers. As you get more subscribers, it gets a little bit more difficult because like reading through 600 or 700 comments on each video would probably be a bit much, but who knows. We'll see what we can do as time progresses. Uh, anyway, his number one is Total Biscuit or Total Halibut. Um, he understands it's not everyone's cup of tea, but he is the reason he got involved in the StarCraft 2 community. And I think Total Biscuit also does a lot of good for the StarCraft community, um, especially with his competitions and stuff. But other than that, his I suck at StarCraft broadcasts like his streaming and stuff I mean come on he's actually really bad at the game and he still puts himself out there he plays um, he's gotten a lot better and I think that appeals to a lot of people that he's sort of showing them that it's possible um, anyway 
he uh, Bob mentions that he was subbed for his WoW videos, um, and he also likes the style of his WTF videos, so that's good. Um, I think many people are going to mention Husky, so I think he'll let him be, other than say that his love for the game, he has a love for the game and it shows, and also Banelings, obviously, <laughs> yes. Same as Otosis has a love for Banelings too, we know that. Um, oh, and there you go, Otosis is someone that didn't get enough love on YouTube. That's, tr that's true as well, but I think he sort of doesn't really go for that. Um, I think he can put a little bit more effort in. He's part of the game station. I mean, really, he's, he's got the, the foot in there to, to make something big, but he's not interested. He's, he's into his GSL casting, and I don't blame him. Um, then he says, I'm not sure about Day9. I think, I think Day9 counts uh, because he's got like 170,000 subscribers, and he's definitely a YouTuber, uh, maybe not as big. It's maybe a blip TV or Justin TV or live stream or whatever you want to call it. Um, but Day9 definitely counts and I'm subscribed to him. I think he's well worth it. I don't think I need to explain to you who Day9 is. Um, he, he's, his like, strategical knowledge of the game is just like unparalleled. He, he seems so patient when he talks to people, when he, uh, when he casts with other people, when he does his dailies. Uh, someone actually said a bit further down, Coffee and a daily equals a good combination. <laughs> no, you're going to need like six coffees because that cup of coffee will either be totally cold by the time the daily is done or you'll finish it in the first uh, 5, 10, 20 minutes even and then you'll still have more than half the daily left. It doesn't really matter. Um, so yes, day 9 definitely counts and i got to say I'm also definitely subscribed to him. I watch a lot of his stuff uh, if I get the time. The dailies are too long. I mostly don't watch them but... They're definitely worth watching. Then lastly, he says, OMFG's Kara Jesse Cox is another YouTuber he enjoys, but like the Yogs, this is an interesting thing that he says here, I only enjoy one half of the duo. I find Pride and Simon of the Yogs cast to be fairly annoying. Um, Pride and Jesse, to me, they don't really work together that much. I think Jesse's stuff that comes out is mostly him alone, and then Pride releases stuff alone, but I do agree, I do prefer Jesse, and Jesse's... He's cool. He's, he's a nice, sincere guy, and that's what I really enjoy about him. Um, and the Yogs cast, I find that, I, I think they're both pretty equal. They could be annoying, but most of the time they're pretty entertaining. And when they, he says, um, Simon is only annoying when he starts doing the high-pitched squealy voices and ah and ooh in over cute things. Uh, that's true as well, but like, I don't know, that's what, that's what you get with them. That You subscribe to them, you expect that kind of thing. So that was from Bob T. Godfish. Thank you very much. Interesting. Um, then here's one hmm, that I actually haven't checked out. Number five on uh, Bottled Water is Good is, uh, what is this, Sat Saturine Films or The Amazing Atheist. I think that's the same thing, but I haven't checked that out yet. I will right after this. I should have actually checked it out already. Um, maybe I'll open it now while I'm busy here. This is very, this is very slack of me, but uh, I will do it. And uh, the next one on his list, let's have a look at that quickly. Blue Zephos. That is, if you didn't know, that's Yogg's cost. Then he's got Tales of Lumineer. Aww. Oh. And then OMFG Kata at number two. That's a nice high spot for Jesse. And number one, Total Biscuit. Um, also, I suppose it makes sense that he is there. Um, so I'm, I'm entering Saturine. There we go. Hold on. Interesting. So he makes general. This is not, not I'm guessing it's not gaming related stuff. Um, here's a guy talking to a camera. It's like skits and stuff like that. I don't know this channel. I will check it out. Um, and I'll let you know, Those are, maybe that's two of them at the top there, it might not be the same ones, but anyway, I'll check them out soon and let you guys know uh, in the comments or something, or maybe next week's show, anyway. So, uh, let's see what's next, then we've got Apollo, he says that Total Biscuit is number one, duh, then Blue Zephos, Yogg's Cost number two, good general gaming content and he used to play Minecraft, I suppose, it's nice, I also like sort of... I like, if I don't play a game anymore, I still like to follow the, what's going on in the game, the news, uh, watch some stuff of it. Like, even if I didn't play StarCraft anymore, I'd still watch these guys' videos. Then he says, Husky StarCraft, small amount of gaming content and a good StarCraft 2 caster, yes. HD StarCraft, one of the best StarCraft 2 casters, he says, um, that's number four. I definitely agree, I think HD has a much more bearable voice. He's got a really good casting voice, actually. Uh, he's also very knowledgeable because he's actually a proper player himself. I think he's, I would call him on the verge of being a pro player. He actually did pretty well um, in the what was it, MLG group stages. He's a good player. He's pretty good. Um, and I find his costs a lot more enjoyable than Husky's. 
Uh, they actually started off together, if you guys don't know this, HD and Husky started off together and then they sort of went their separate ways and then Husky sort of exploded <laughs> because everyone subscribed to him and no one subscribed to good old HD. Uh, but anyway, I think HD didn't take it as seriously, he had other stuff to do. Husky went full on into the Starcraft chart casting, but still, I enjoy HD a lot um, as well as Husky. So then, lastly, day 9 TV. He says he doesn't watch him on uh, YouTube very much, but he likes the, the good old dailies every Sunday to Monday. So, top five for Edenite. Number one, day nine. Number two, Total Biscuit. Um, let's see. Oh, he says his WTF series is amazing for gamers and indie development industry. That's true. Then number three, Destiny's channel. That's actually called Remember Tomorrow with a zero at the end. Destiny is... He's amazing. Like he's also one of the most entertaining streamers out there. He does uh, pretty much only StarCraft. I've seen him play other games before, but it's pretty much only StarCraft. But he's he's really he's also a big character. He's always got a lot to say, uh, be it good or bad. And recently, there's been so much drama with Destiny that that's the one channel you definitely want to subscribe to. All the different people he gets on his stream. I mean, like random people. Everyone, everyone has everyone in the StarCraft community has at some time or another been on Destiny stream talking to him and all of that goes up on his YouTube channel so definitely want to check out um, it's called Remember Tomorrow or you can just search I think you can probably just search for Destiny on YouTube and you'll find it and then lastly Game Station um, apparently he likes Lane's updates specifically I'm not a big fan of Lane uh, I do like the Game Station and the general gaming stuff they put out but I'm not a big, huge fan of Lane I don't know he just doesn't appeal to me and his general gaming content like the, the news episodes he puts out they are way too like compressed and vague to me to be anything to me. I suppose that's just because I'm way more hardcore into reading news that's the washing machine making a noise. I read a lot of news every day um, or on the days that I do the news at least. I follow the news very closely so to me it's just a bit light. Anyway, off topic he subscribes to a bassist called Marlo DK. Great bassist, amazing jams and lessons. That's cool. I also subscribe to a lot of musicians on YouTube. I find it well worth it. They always put out amazing stuff and probably much better than than most like real bands do. Then um, Mup ZA. Or as you probably see him in chat, Jamupsa. <laughs> I like that guy's nickname. Anyway. He likes all the regular, uh, all the regulars, Game Station folks, Dodger, Husky, Lane, Warp Zone. Warp Zone puts out some really cool skits and stuff. Dodger, I don't think I really even need to mention. She is, she's quite funny and quirky. I sort of liked her more when she started out, but she still puts out really good stuff. Um, her news episodes are worth it to me, unlike Lane's, because she spends a lot more time talking about her topics. She covers stuff that is generally seen as more hardcore. So she doesn't go for the light pieces of news like, oh, Team Fortress has gone free to play. She'll go for the heavy politically uh, <laughs> incorrect stuff and talk about it for a nice long amount of time. No, but she, she covers a lot of like interesting stuff, anime, cosplay, um, comic stuff, like uh, obviously a lot of game stuff as well. But she sort of covers, I don't know how to say it, the more scene side of things. She's, she's very interesting to watch. Um, she puts out some gaming videos too, she does a lot of collaborations with people, so always interesting to watch. And she's a girl. There aren't many of those that are worth watching on YouTube, sorry to say. Sorry. They just, I don't know why, but that's just, yeah. Anyway. Um, and then obviously his favorite is me. Oh, <laughs> why do I say obviously there? No, he actually said obviously there. Um, but, yeah, thank you again. But I did say you don't need to mention mine. Um, then. Okay, so then he says if he goes on vacation for a week, he's got a lot of videos of mine to catch up on. And I can imagine if you go away for a week, I'd have you'd have a ton of videos. I upload like two or three a day sometimes. Anyway, and he says he also loves that the fact that I answer comments and interact with you guys. Then Divined, Freddie W, um, one of the most subscribed, well, one of the highest subscribed people as well. Freddie W makes amazing skits. He does some really good special effects. Um, he's he's a, he's like sort of on the verge of being an actor slash. YouTuber, sort of the same as I suppose you guys know who Nigga Higa is, uh, Ryan Higa, I think his name is. He was the most subscribed, sort of the same kind of thing, but he adds a lot more special effects. Um, he's always entertaining to watch. Freddy W, check him out if you haven't already. Uh, Babes of Lumen, I think. <laughs> nice, very really nice. Angry Joe Show, awesome reviews about games, movies, etc. Angry Joe is pretty entertaining as well. I'm not, or maybe I'm subscribed to him, I think I am actually. Um, but he's pretty good. He's angry. He, he gets very loud sometimes, but it's an entertaining way of watching a review. And he's pretty honest about his reviews as well. In day nine, and oh, I'm really old now. 
Oh, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> it's early. It's okay. It's like 11 o'clock. Then game is born. Best game news. Now, I suppose that's general gaming news. I haven't I haven't checked out Game is Born yet. I'm going to assume that they're something like Machinima's weekly news updates or whatever. Um, I'll check that out soon too. So that's Game is Born as well from Divine. Then, Panic. Um, Panic says he's got Ray William Johnson. If you have to, re if you don't know who this is, you have no into <laughs> internet life, bro. Okay. Then Freddy W. And then Tobuscus and Toby Turner. Uh, that's both his main channel and his vlog channel. Um, and I suppose I could include his game channel here as well. He's got Tobuscus, Toby Turner, and Toby Games. Toby Turner is probably my favorite YouTuber at the moment. Um, his literal trailers are amazing. They only come out every now and then. His vlog channel is absolutely, like, the funniest thing ever. His vlogs, every single day, he releases a vlog, and it's really, they're really funny. Okay, if you haven't seen Toby Turner vlogs yet, you've got to check them out right now. Um, he's he's extremely extremely entertaining. He's also one of the biggest characters on YouTube at the moment. Like he's just got so much personality. He's a crazy guy, um, full of charisma, I would say. And uh, yeah, always always worth watching. To me, probably he would probably be my number one if I had to if I had to list my subscribe my subscription list right now. Um, then X S X E Phil. So that's Philip DeFranco. Uh, everyone knows him as well. He does a lot of sort of general news stuff, not gaming, just world news, I suppose you could call it. Uh, he's also very good, he's been on YouTube for such a long time, a lot of subscribers, um, and yeah, he covers the news, he's very honest about it, also worth watching. Then, ProZerg SC, this is the last one of the of the lists, he says, Day9, Freddy W, um, Day9 because he taught him a huge amount of StarCraft, Freddy W, awesome effects, and he got him into video editing, that's a good thing. Uh, then Husky, I think you all know about that. Uh, then he says Tales of Lumen and Game Station, so that's cool. Uh, Game Station also, as I said before, great stuff. And then the questions. Um, I gotta scroll up quickly to find the one question that I missed. Um, did I put that one down there? I'll start with this one. Question from Bottled Water is good. Do you believe Ray William Johnson is the most worthless YouTuber out there, or are the masses just jealous of his success? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think he's a genius and he's not worthless at all. He puts incredible amount of effort into his work. Um, probably one of the hardest working YouTubers out there, I'd say. He, like, I, I definitely don't think he's worthless at all. He, he does, uh, like, those episodes, it looks like it's nothing. It looks like he just stands around talking for a little while, throwing clips in, but it's, it look, it's actually a lot of work. He has to actually find those videos, probably sift through, like, millions of messages every day. Um, I think uh, he's, he's definitely, he deserves to be at the number one spot at the moment. You can't put a gaming guy at the top because gaming doesn't appeal to absolutely everyone where stuff like his does so I think he's he's done a good job to get where he is and I'm I'm definitely happy to be subscribed to him then Bob T Godfish um, who is the first person I subscribe to and why what's the story behind your YouTube name first I think I subscribed to, to music stuff first I was into music a while ago I do play guitar it's practically some way I haven't for a long time I just haven't had time for it um, I subscribe, I think it was Sam Hart. I don't know if you guys know Sam Hart. He did the Mario Kart love song and very many others. To me, the Mario Kart love song was like just the beginning. Uh, the rest of his stuff was absolutely amazing too. I subscribed to David Choi pretty early on, another musician. Um, musicians, basically. I subscribed to them, not the gaming stuff. So later on, I sort of sub started subscribing to gaming related stuff. One of the first must have been Total Biscuit as well. I don't know. Uh, when he started doing the Cataclysm stuff back then, I haven't been on YouTube for that long. Uh, the name behind my YouTube, the story behind my YouTube name, I think I've said this before, but it's so it was the name of a, a series, a book series that we started working on myself and my girlfriend. Um, Lumen is the name of the world in the story, and it's just a nice name. I like the word. Uh, tales of, obviously that's pretty self-explanatory, you know, not tales as in a tale of an animal, but tales as in stories of. Um, and, I don't know, the name sort of the only reason I actually chose this name is because I tried a few others when I when I made a YouTube account back in the day, along, like a year and a half ago or something, two years ago, I don't know when, but then none of them wanted to work. I, like All the ones I wanted were taken and that's with YouTube a big problem I guess. Uh, so I uploaded one video on this channel and then I thought to myself, okay well I've now uploaded a video and I've got like five subscribers so I'm going to stick with this one and that just stuck. And I sort of at first I wasn't really happy with the name, I didn't want to, when I got to like maybe even 500 subscribers around there I wasn't really totally happy with keeping it 
but right now I'm really happy with it and I think it'll definitely work for me for the future. So, then, how do you feel about collaborative playthroughs? Like, I like collabor collaborative stuff, but I feel, I don't know, personally I just don't like working with someone else's schedule. Um, I don't like doing stuff with people I don't know very well, and I don't know anyone very well. <laughs> That's the problem. But for me personally now, I, okay, wait, first. I enjoy other people's collaborative stuff. Someone like, people like Simon and Lewis, they work incredibly well together because they've been doing it so long together. They live together, or they, they I'll say they live together. Um, they, they've been doing it a lot, okay? Uh, people like Jesse Cox and Total Biscuit, they're not bad together. It's a bit awkward at times, but it's also pretty entertaining. Um, there are a lot of collaborative guys out there that do, well, StarCraft 2 Shoutcast, you actually have to have two people there most of the time, else it gets a bit dull. Um, but personally, for myself, playthroughs, we were focusing on playthroughs here. Um, I don't know, it's it's nice and all, but I I think that it can sort of either it can it can work very well or it can fail pretty horribly so it's it's really it's a thin line for me I, I personally will probably have to wait a bit till I'm I'm personally more comfortable at doing all of this because I am pretty new to this as well and like I feel that other people are probably a lot better at improvising than me and it's just gonna take me a bit more time to get to the level that they at so at the moment I am not too I'm not too keen to do anything like that yet I would like to sometime um, I don't know with who, I don't know what game, I don't know stuff like that, but yeah, that's, that's something I'm definitely thinking of, and I'm not against it at all. So, <laughs> I'd like to hear your take on Total Biscuit. Um, ah. <laughs> he, like, Total Biscuit, he can be really, really harsh at times. Uh, I did say that it was a question about him, and here's that question. He can be really hardcore, I think he's sometimes a little bit too honest, but that's fine, like, he, he, People subscribe to him and they should know that when they subscribe. He's like he's great, okay? I think it's I, I like sub, I like being subscribed to him. Recently he's become a lot more harsh when he had he had this whole thing of uh, I think he said he had to stop reading comments and disable messages and stop interacting with his YouTubers because of stress related stuff. Now that's the kind of thing I just don't believe. I don't know. Uh, I'm being totally honest about this now. I just don't think that's possible. Like, I don't know, okay? If your YouTube comments or subscribers make you have a mental breakdown or something like that, or cause stress for you, then you're doing it wrong. Um, you're taking it way too seriously. Maybe he's the kind of guy who has to take it seriously. I don't know. Uh, like, I, personally, I think he's a great... He, he looks like he's, he's a great YouTuber. He puts out great content. Um, I don't know how he is as a person, like, I've never spoken to him, I've never interacted with him at all, um, I've never sort of seen him off the camera or away from the mic or whatever, so I can't say like that, I don't know about him, uh, like, personally, uh, but yeah, I think he's, he's definitely a, a welcome addition, and he's so different from everyone else, so it definitely makes it worth, to, worth it subscribing to him, I don't know. Uh, as I said before, he's very harsh, like, he's not everyone's cup of tea, I think you said that, Bob T. Godfish. Um, but he, he, you sort of, he sort of grows on you and you sort of tend to take what he says with a grain of salt. Like, you don't take it all 100% seriously because he does whine a lot, he does rant a lot, but that's just who he is. So yeah. Then, may, this is from Spider Present. Maybe you answered this before, what, what inspired you to make YouTube videos or did any YouTubers inspire you? <sighs> I don't know, like, I think I have answered this before. It was just when the StarCraft beta came out. Um, there was no, like, I, I was really into it, I was enjoying it, I didn't do gameplay stuff back then, I started doing news on StarCraft Beta, that was my first Pulse episode, you can check them out, they're terrible. Um, and that was sort of where I started. I, I just started making really bad news episodes where I actually sat in front of the camera and I had these little pop-up blocks with the news stuff. Um, and that was just sort of for fun. I got a, I used our, our, like my mom's camera or something and I did that for fun and it just went from there. Uh, other than that, like, who inspired me? I don't know. Uh, no one really. No one specifically. Um, I just, I sort of wanted to do it for the local community because no one had any idea what was going on. No one was actually in the beta. There was like five out of the 500 people in the local South African community who actually got into the beta and I was one of them. So I helped sort of cover everything for the masses and that's just where it got started. Uh, then. Apollo, when did you start using YouTube? I think it was about a year ago, a little bit, a little bit more than a year. Um, I did sort of 
casually use YouTube before that, but I started using it hardcore about a year ago. Who were the first five people you started watching? I mentioned that before. It was probably Sam Hart, David Choi, I say for gaming related stuff, Total Biscuit, and I can't remember the others. Not for him any more than that. Uh, why do you not like you? What do you not like about YouTube? Um, nothing really. I, I the copyright stuff. Uh, the the copyright stuff is terrible. I, I mentioned that in my in my uh, previous vlogs. Like I've having such headaches with copyright stuff, the revenue sharing stuff. I don't make money. Like <laughs> I make like a pittance, like cents, like very little money from it. But still, they are so on my case with the copyright stuff. I see other people uploading. Um, gameplay videos every single day and the second the video goes up they've got ads on their video so they either saying something really special to YouTube to make it work or I just don't know what to say to them to let them enable the ads um, some videos of mine get denied immediately when they get uploaded just because of one or two images in the videos because they're copyrighted or this and that group has this and that trademark on them that really irritates me that's the one thing I totally dislike another thing is that with Internet Explorer specifically YouTube breaks a lot and the uploads um, the uploads fail a lot, that's another thing. Uh, fail, like, non-resumable uploads, it's terrible. Like, they say it's resumable, but it can resume if you start it about 20 seconds after it drops, but after that, no, no resuming. So yeah, those are the things that I don't like. If any of you have any tips or hints about that, let me know, I'll, I'll be totally appreciative. Now that is noisy. That washing machine is totally noisy over there. Anyway, you're gonna have to listen very carefully now, it's quite noisy. Now, bottled water is good. Uh, do you believe Raymond John- oh, that, I asked that one already. <laughs> Um, Edenite, want to hear your opinion on jump uh, on people jumping on the YouTube bandwagon out of money uh, and not passion? People like Cater is seventeen and Trade Chat and hundreds of other attention whores. Um, Cater is seventeen. I think she's been in one or two to Toby Turner vlogs. I do know who she is. She's a British girl or something like that. Um, Trade Chat, yeah. I I don't personally. I'm subscribed to her at the moment. I don't enjoy her stuff that much, <laughs> honestly. Um, she isn't sincere. It's, as you say, she's not sincere about it. Uh, she tries a lot to be like other people. When I listen to her vlogs, then she even starts her vlog off exactly the same as I think Philip DeFranco starts his off uh, with the whole intro-webs thing. I don't know. She no. She comes off to me as a little bit flaky and a little bit uh, fake. I don't know. I can't say. I don't enjoy it very much. I I, I think that people like that will get to a point. Um, in their careers, in their YouTube careers, where things will just go, go start going a lot slower for them, which will, the point will probably be around 60 to 80 thousand subscribers. They'll get there, um, that'll be their like plateau. Then they'll start going up incredibly slowly off that, unless they start doing something that's actually really good. So that's I'm sorry about that. The washing machine's over there. Let me show you. Wait, there it is. It's making a noise right now, and I can't stop it. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't. I personally. It's, it's not nice, obviously, I don't really, like, they, they sort of put a bad name out there for the rest of the YouTubers, but it's, like I said, it's, it's not going to matter in the long run. Um, then the last question from MupZA, uh, which Diablo channels am I subscribed to? Diablo related, none. Like, what, uh, Force puts out some Diablo stuff, and I didn't talk about Force, but he's pretty good. Um, he seems to be pretty dedicated to it, but at the same time he's pretty slack on some of his stuff. I, I mean, I don't know, I'm very critical about stuff like that. I don't I, I don't like his news episodes at all. I think he's incredibly, incredibly slack on that. He, he makes a lot of mistakes when he talks, he doesn't edit any of it out, um, he doesn't do any pretty pictures in nothing like that. Maybe that's because of copyright stuff. His news episodes end up being like uh, three minutes long and he covers stuff that's either old or um, stuff that's only related to his channel or something like that. I don't like the way he, he does things like that. His StarCraft stuff is pretty good, I can't say anything bad about that. Um, but that's one of the... and I'm subscribed... no, that's actually pretty much it. Uh, I'm subscribed to the official Diablo channel. There aren't very many Diablo related channels out there. The only one I can still think of is Craft Chest. Uh, good old Craft Chest. And he only made, he only did lots of Diablo 2 stuff at the moment. Uh, he's not really putting out very much, he puts out some vlogs and stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be back with Diablo 3 though, so that's great. But that's going to be it. Um, the thing is, uh, yeah, next week I haven't really sort of decided what I wanted to do with next week. So what I'm going to do is um, post something a little bit different next week. For next, next week's Lumen Weekly, I, I didn't want to put a topic out there yet, so maybe I'm going to introduce a challenge again for next week. 
um, and then just introduce a set of questions with that. So you can basically just leave your replies to what I said in this week's episode below. Um, I'll reply to that in the comments and then next week we're going to start fresh again. Um, and I'm going to try sort of redo things a bit, maybe add in another piece to the Lumen Weekly so we can just sort of get things going there again. But thanks for all the questions. So that's it. You don't have to add any questions. If you want to ask questions, I will answer them next week about anything at all. Um, but I haven't got a topic for next week. So we'll sort of get to that then. So thanks for all the questions. It's been a pleasure. It's been a long... I don't even know how long I've been sitting here, but that's been long. Um, she's sighing back there because of how long it is. I can see her. I would turn the camera, but she's going to be angry with me. Um, so... Thanks for watching, thanks for the questions, it's been really entertaining, I like talking about YouTubers, uh, it's very interesting to me. And um, yeah, check back here next week for another one, I'm sorry it was a bit late, but that's going to be it. And as usual, happy, I can't say detectivizing, but happy YouTubing. <laughs>